Hey, good afternoon. It's uh, Saturday, March 16th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. So I wasn't able to be here yesterday, but we're back at it today. We're continuing to look at this rich material in the book of Ephesians, which is designed to help us know God better. That's Paul's, Paul's prayer at the beginning of, of this rather short little book or long letter, however you want to phrase it. He wants us to know God better. And now we're looking in Ephesians 4 and the rich things that God wants us to get rid of that have to do with that part of us that died, but we still struggle with in our flesh, and put on those things that are new, that are designed to cause us to be like Christ so that we can know him more deeply. I looked at Ephesians 4.29 briefly on Thursday. I'm going to return to it tonight. And the title for today's video is When Good Words Become Toxic. Toxic. When Good Words Become Toxic. And that happens when we only consider what we think is a good word and we don't give careful thought to the person we're talking to. Do they think it's a helpful word? That's the test. And Ephesians 4.29 lays that out for us. I'm going to read again from the uh, Legacy Standard Bible. And l listen to what Paul is saying here. Let no unwholesome word come proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for building up what is needed, so that it will give grace to those who hear. You see, the focus here is not on the intention of what I want to say, but what is it that's going to give grace and build up the person that I'm talking to? So let's break these things down phrase, phrase by phrase. Let no unwholesome, or the actual Greek there is rotten. No, let, let no one rotten word proceed from your mouth. The adjective there, which is translated you know, unwholesome, other cases foul, but actually it means it describes decayed trees that are rotting. And an example of that would be the bad trees that produce bad fruit in Matthew 7, where Jesus says, "Be you know, good fruit's not going to come from a bad tree. And bad trees don't produce good fruit. And good trees don't produce bad fruit. This is this rotten trunk, this, this bad tree that's producing this. So a rotten word in the context of what's said here is not simply foul language, as some uh, translations you know, render this. It's any word that is not building a person up. This means that any word that you speak might be a rotten word if it doesn't result to the benefit and grace of the person you're talking to. That's what is needed here. Only a word, only such a word, that is good for building up as it is needed. We get some light on this just earlier in the chapter, verses 16 and 7, 15 and 16, where Paul is saying this, But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every, every way into him who is the head, Christ. Let us grow into Christ by speaking the truth in love. From him the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, listen to this, promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love, by the proper working of each individual part. See what he's saying here. He's reminding us of what was said just a few sentences earlier here. We have got to speak the truth in love. So he's just rephrasing it here. Let no unwholesome words proceed from your mouth. Speak the truth in love. Be concerned. Be, be focused on the other person. What is needed? That is considering the needs of the person I'm talking to as more important than mine. This is huge for us because we so often fall into this trap. Well, I told them what they needed. Well, granted, some people are obstinate and hard to get through to, but it's not about if I'm telling them what I think they need. It's have they heard what I'm saying in the light of grace. Because the Holy, you're, you're relying on the Holy Spirit to produce His truth to help them see what they need to do. Our speech must be informed of, to, by the person that we're talking to. To do this, we must be epic, excellent listeners. Just two passages, and I've talked about these many times before. 
Proverbs 18.2, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. That's the person who says, I'm going to tell you what you need, and you better listen. You see what's going on there? I'm not really trying to help that person. I'm just trying to dis discharge my duty, so I'm off the hook. That's not what is going to be proper here. Rather, Proverbs 18, 13 says that if you answer before listening, that's your folly and shame. That's a disgraceful thing because I haven't listened to that person. I don't know what they need. I'm just telling them what I think they need. I need to let what I think they need be informed by where they are so I can break the, bring the appropriate understanding of God's truth to them, not just what I think but so that they hear it and so they receive grace. We must do more than just have good intentions. We've got to be committed to serving God and to serving this person more than I'm trying to make myself look good. So you see, it's your words that must give grace. So he gives a command. See to it that your words will give grace to those who are here. That is the test of good communication, of good words. Whether it's in your family setting or in the church setting, people that you love and care for, will they receive what you're hearing because you're really reaching out to them? Granted, some people won't hear no matter what you say, but that's on them. We've got to put the burden on us to speak, which is really helpful to them. See, if we don't, that our words are providing grace, our quote-unquote good words will become toxic. But Paul wants us to speak the truth in love so that we can draw more closely to Christ, know Him better, and care for the people that He has died for, that He has claimed for His own. See the difference here. It's a powerful statement. Let no unwholesome talk, let no rotten word proceed from your mouth but only such a word as is good for building up what is needed, so that we we'll give grace to those who hear. Let's be done with trying to make our intentions, and I think this is what you need. More, I see you're hurting. I want to understand. Before I say something, I really want to understand where you are so that we can apply the truth of God to exactly what's needed in your life so that you're blessed by it. And that's a beautiful thought for us. And it's a great way to end this week. Uh, announcement. Next Tuesday evening, I'm going to be live at 11.06 p.m. Because that's when spring begins on the East Coast of the United States. Tuesday the 19th. I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to do a regular video that day, but I'm also going to be live at 11.06. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks to Birds for being here. Thank you for the Lord for this beautiful setting. And Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.